Well, I know I speak for all MMA fans when I wish Misha Tate the best in her recovery from a knee injury that cost her tonight's title shot. It does present Liz Carmouche with the opportunity of a lifetime. Of course, the current queen of the division, Marluce, the golden girl of Golden Glory Kunin, has designs on keeping the title for, and I quote, the next decade. Well, she takes that first step towards that goal tonight. I have to treat the belt with respect. It's very precious to me. I will not give it to anyone. Can't is an impossibility. It's not my language. It's not who I am. And so I'm going to take every opportunity I can. I got the name Gorilla from my coach. It was a mixture between just overwhelming strength and the fact that I would just ground out people. Carmouche comes out storming. Well, what I learned in the victory against Sarah Kaufman was that uh, I'm mentally really strong. I'm doing this for quite a while, but it's nice to get that confirmed. <laughs> I think the best weapon in my fighting arsenal is being the underdog. Nobody knows what to expect from me. Just go as hard as I can, go as fast as I can. She's just young and she wants to get in there. But this is my belt and I will keep it for at least a decade. She's worked hard for the title, but I want to take it from her. If it goes to the scorecards, I'm disappointed. Looking for the KO. And please welcome to the cage, the undefeated women's welterweight challenger, Liz Gorilla Carmouche. Pat, you and I have been very pleased with uh, the way that Liz Carmouche has, has looked on Strikeforce Challengers. She was an alternate in the women's uh, tournament in uh, Phoenix last year. Really dominated a very tough Jan Feeney in her last fight. Was probably on her way to a title shot eventually. We didn't think it would come this soon, but because of her military background, the mental toughness, she says she's ready for anything, anytime. A chance of a lifetime for her. It doesn't matter when it comes. If you're a true professional, you're going to step up and say yes. This girl is excited for this chance. Trust me, her adrenaline is pumping right now. Be careful what you wish for in strike force. <laughs> Carmouche's key to the cage is to push the pace. I think the short notice could be an advantage to her. If she rushes out there, she's only got six fights, but if she rushes out there and hurts Coonan early, cuts her, she's got a chance to win this. She changed recently uh, the training camp. She added two wrestling coaches, uh, and while everyone was impressed with her stoppage of Finney, she says she actually would have finished it earlier, but didn't follow the game plan. It's gonna take a master game plan tonight to knock off the champion. And now, the submission master and newly crowned defending champion, Marlus Kunin. Kunin submitted the previously undefeated Sarah Kaufman via armbar to capture the Strikeforce women's 135-pound title in October. And even though we refer to her as a submission specialist, she was known as the female Hicks and Gracie early in her career, even uh, compared to Ruben Asano with that flying armbar victory over Becky Levi at the beginning of her career in Japan. She says that tonight she wants to show off the famous Golden Glory striking in her first title defense. And she's a meek and mild-mannered girl when you talk to her, but you know she's got vicious Muay Thai coming out of Golden Glory. Well, she was completely overwhelmed by the strength and size of Cyborg when it came to the striking match. But Kuna is a really good striker, and her key to the cage tonight is to keep it standing. I think this becomes her night to do all tight stand-up. She's crisp, she's really powerful, and if she can keep this on her feet, I think we're going to see some beautiful, beautiful stand-up come from the ladies. Getting encouragement from her longtime trainer, Martin De Jong, and really Marlis Kunin knows the value of the title and you can see it in her eyes when we talk about it she just loves being champion and wants to hold on to that belt for a long time all right it's time for the tail of the tape for the first of our two championship fights tonight the thing that obviously stands out to me is kunin is four inches taller much bigger girl she's fought at 145 pounds before now makes 35 only an inch and a half reach advantage though surprisingly All right, fans, here we go. Strike Force and Showtime present five five minute rounds for the Strike Force World Women's Welterweight Championship. 
Introducing to you first, the challenger fighting out of the blue corner. Standing at five feet, four and a half inches, she weighed in at 134 pounds. A Valley Judo fighter with a record of six wins, no losses, with four knockouts and one submission. Please welcome the undefeated challenger fighting out of San Diego, California, Liz Gorilla Carmouche. Her opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner, standing at five feet eight and one half inches. She weighed in at 135 pounds. With a background in shooto, her record includes 18 wins, four losses, with three knockouts and 13 submissions. From Amsterdam, here is the women's MMA pioneer and Strike Force World Welterweight Champion, Marlouz Kunin. And our referee in charge, now to give instructions, Greg Franklin. Blue, red. Ladies, you've been given your instructions in the locker room. I want a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Do I have any questions from the challenger? Do I have any questions from the champ? Touch gloves, come out fighting. The golden girl of golden glory, Marluce Kunin, who has been in the sport for over a decade. While Liz Gorilla Carmouche gets the title shot you ready, Blue? sooner than you ready, Red? anyone thought. And we are underway. Five five minute rounds. Kunin in the red gloves. Carmouche in the blue. Carmouche has got to stay up on her. You got to get in her face. Looks like that's what she wants to do. She seems pretty full of energy right now. A lot of movement. Nice outside leg kick delivered by Kooning, who again trains at Golden Glory, where so many tremendous strikers have honed their craft. Nice straight right by Kunin. Countered that rear leg round kick by Carmouche. You can hear the very vocal coach, Martin de Jong, speaking in Dutch, shouting out instructions. He's been with Marlos Kunin since she was 14. She took up MMA and she once again stings Carmouche with that shot because she wanted to learn self-defense. And really this speaks to, to the sport of MMA. You don't have to be a competitor. It really can help you in, in so many different ways, guys. Yeah, it's the only sport. I mean, I can't go and train with the, uh, you know, the St. Louis Cardinals in baseball camp or anything like that, but you'd be amazed at how many people who are just businessmen and women who train with fighters to help them get ready for fights because they get really good at grappling and things like that, right, Frank? Yeah, just the conditioning, the lifestyle, the fitness. I mean, martial arts is a great way to live because you got a rule book every day of what you're supposed to be doing. Speaking getting better in your body and getting better in your technique. Speaking of fitness and conditioning, Carmouche is a freshman at San Diego Community College. She initially studied psychology, but she switched to fitness because she obviously thinks it will help her MMA career as well. Nice leg kick, low leg kick delivered by Kunin, and so far, Kunin controlling the center of the cage. High Ooh. kick delivered by the champion. Good one-two kick. Garmush is doing a good job of moving her head and making the punches harder to land. She really is, Frank. It's a uh, very good uh, observation. She's done a good job of getting out of the way of a lot of stuff. You look at the two physiques and lengthy Kunin, you would think she'd have a longer reach advantage than just an inch and a half, but so far she is making the most of it, although the denizens of Columbus are getting restless. A feeling out process here in the opening round of what is scheduled for five, five minute rounds for the Strike Force women's 135 pound title. Kunin, Kunin caught that overhand right from Carmouche and tried to pop her right back with a straight. She's really getting, is getting closer and closer on that distance and starting to find a range. Counter right by Carmouche. Now they close the gap. Tie plum momentarily into the body lock for Carmouche as she pins the champion along the fence. Carmouche is strong in this position. Yeah, and she doesn't want to be battling with Carmouche up top. Carmouche is too tall, too long there. She needs to drop down to the legs below. Uh, below the hips and, and lock her hands to take her down there. They jockey for a position along the fence. Oh, and Kunin, a mouse developing under her right eye. Body lock again by Carmouche, which 
She would probably like to lead to a takedown, but against a, a woman like uh, Kunin, you have to be very careful. Very, very talented offer back in the submission game. Oh, good knee. I think the Kunin's got the advantage in this position. Heel strikes from Carmouche, and oh, there's some foot stomp action, and Carmouche says, I can play that game as well. And Carmouche is doing a good job. She knows what she's doing here. You can see how her top oh, overhook arm, the arm that's going over the top of Car uh, Kunin's, is in the under position, in the locked hands position. That helps her pinch down on that, that overhook, and, you know, the, only somebody that's really worked on that stuff knows that. There's a lot of MMA people that don't even know that or do it. So the girl has done a homework. there by referee Greg Franklin. Wasn't happy with the uh, lack of sustained action along the fence, and now Karmouche trying to find a way, but there's that high head kick again. Kunin serving notice that you better be careful. I think that's Kunin's money right there, that one-two high head kick. Because Karmouche is moving her head, trying to move out of range, but in doing so, she's leaning her head side to side. I wonder how that swollen, uh, the, the swelling is underneath the eye, but that's something I think that needs to be paid attention to. The, the right eye of Marlos Kunin has been damaged. Carmouche is doing a much better job standing up than I expected her to, and I tell you what. I thought that's where she would probably have the best bet against the champion would be in the stand-up. We've seen what she was able to do against Jan Finney, even in her previous bout with Colleen Schneider. She's Ten brought seconds. some wrestling coaches into camp. So uh, a close opening round between the champion, Marlos Kunin, and the challenger, Liz Carmouche. <laughs> Harry DeAndre is standing by with light heavyweight, Mike Kyle. Thank you very much, Moro. Joining me right now, Mike Kyle, taking on Musasi, April 9th in San Diego. I know in the last fight you suffered a broken hand against Antonio Bigfoot Silva. How are you feeling as prepared for Musasi? You know, uh, I'm feeling really good. I've been hitting hard for the last three weeks. Uh, back to training full time at American uh, Kickboxing Academy. You know, uh, plan on putting on a really great show April 9th. Well, I know that one of your highest profile victories actually came against Feijal back in 2009. If you're Dan Henderson, what do you have to do tonight? You know, for uh, Dan Henderson to uh, be, for, um, be uh, winning tonight, he has to be moving to the right, stay away from the leg kick. Feijal has a really good, powerful uh, leg kick. So uh, Dan Henderson's got to circle to the right and look to land that big right hand. Do you think he can pull it off tonight? What's your prediction? You know what? I really think the longer the fight goes, Dan, Dan can do it. You know, I'm, I'm shooting for Dan. All right. Thanks so much, Mike Kyle. We look forward to seeing you on April 9th against Musasi in San Diego. Thank you. All right. Let's send it back to Moro, cage side. You ready? Let's go. Second round underway. Carmouche, the busier of the two fighters in the opening round when it came to the striking department, out striking Kunin when it comes to power strikes, according to CompuStrike, 10 to 8. So I ask you, Pat, who won the opening round? You know, I, I, I've got to say Carmouche, I think, overall was more active, but she, you know, Kunin landed a lot of powerful low kicks. Frank, so that might have, might have counted. What do you think? I'm calling it a draw. Wow, 10-10 score from Frank Shamrock as Carmouche begins again to take the fight to the champion along the fence. Kunin turns her around and again the foot stomp met with a, a knee response from Kunin. Needs to cause that separation, utilize some of that Muay Thai she learned in Golden Glory. Pat, what hurts more, a knee to the thigh or a stomp to the foot? A knee to the thigh. Yeah, I think so. Another knee, now with the plum, now Carmouche looking for the takedown, drops the level. Conan putting all of her weight on Carmouche to make it difficult. Again, Conan has fought as heavy as 145. Big girl at five, eight and a half. Four inch height advantage, and again, that one and a half inch reach advantage over her challenger. And she's looking for that standing guillotine. She's caught in it. She's caught in it. That height of Conan is gonna play in her favor on this hole. She sat down to get out. And it worked. And Carmouche escapes the guillotine choke submission. A moral victory there with Kunin's 13 of her 18 wins have come via sub. And now it's Carmouche in the close guard and the knees to the back of Kunin's leg. And Carmouche showed a lot of power getting out of that choke because she was stuck what they called down in the well yep. on the wrong side of the body. So her neck was not protected at all by Carmouche's body. I don't know how she powered out of it. I think Kunin here should just start ripping off submission holes, go through her flow until she pops back up. Hey, hey. 
moving her hips. Marlos Kunin staying active on the bottom. Carmouche just has her head down. Needs to posture up, but now look at Kunin using the, going for the armbar. Nice presence of mind by Carmouche. Posturing up now, dropping a right hand on the champion's face. Nails her again. You know, one thing that Carmouche is doing also, very good on the ground, is she's keeping Kunin's body lined up with her. She's not letting her get the angle. And the one time that Carmouche did get the angle, she powered out of the armbar. She saw it coming. Kunin controlling. Carmouche is rest looking for the armbar again, but Carmouche able to pop out again and looking to ground and pound now up on her feet. Two minutes, 12 seconds left in the second round. Passes the guard. Wow. Marlis Kunin, well done by Carmouche. Now in north-south position, kneeing the body of the champion. Now it's the shoulder. Got to be careful not to get rolled here. Her uh, left arm is trapped, and it looks like Kunin's looking to hit that roll. You can see Carmouche could sense it and flattened out a little bit. Carmouche took the fight on two weeks notice when it was reported that Misha Tate had injured her knee in training, making the most of this opportunity of a lifetime thus far. Controlling the champion on the ground from north-south position, a minute 37 now left in the second stanza. Garmouche has a real clean ground and pound style. Carmouche is no slouch on the ground. I tell you what, she's dealing with her very well, holding position very nice here. Yeah, look how tight her hips are, too. Look how close her position is. This girl knows how to ground and pound. One of Carmouche's six wins via submission. Now it's Kunin going for the ankle. Scrambling on the bottom. Carmouche just wanting to stay in top position. Minute nine left in the round. Now in mount, ground and pound from Carmouche. And the champion in trouble. A minute left in the round. Tony looking to get her legs up, but she is being pounded on here by Liz Carmouche. 50 third, seconds left. Third time that Kunin tried bringing those legs up and hooking her armpits and taking her over backwards. Now Carmouche is wide still. She's like, you're not doing that. Kunin needs to buck and roll, as El Guapo Boss Rudin would say, but the high mount. Kunin still active on the bottom, but it's all challenger Liz Carmouche here with 30 seconds remaining in the second round. Yeah, she's Why isn't she exploding her hips up? Because is it too Carmouche's high? hips are uh, not on top of her right. hips anymore. I'm not on her chest, so she I'm can't bridge her up. Yeah, these she's are up under the armpit. She's got to push those knees down or strip herself strip back herself, up into a power position. Right. Final 10 seconds. Is Coonan going to escape the round? Liz Carmouche with hammer fist, ground and pound. Another round in the books for Liz Carmouche. What a round by the challenger. Well, that's got to give her some confidence as she walks to her corner. Lots of action with these girls, wasting. Wasting no time, and this is where she got hurt, right here. Bing, it was kind of a looping overhand right, right on the cheekbone. That's where that swelling came from. These girls are swinging them, and here's that submission hold, which I thought she had. Look, she is hanging her by that neck, and she just sat out of it. Pat, like she said, she was in a weak position, but she used her body weight and her power to break right out of that hold. Great escape. And this is a game I like to call anti-jujitsu. You don't do holds, you just beat them down when you're in the guard. She's doing it perfectly from this position and staying centered, like you said, Pat, staying centered, keeping her there when she was on her chest, she was hitting her, she was hurting her, and she was tiring her out. That's you know, what I like about Carmouche. Frank, you had the opening round at 10-10. A great argument can be made that that was a 10-8 round for Carmouche as she struck, uh, outstruck Kunin 91-9 in the second round, including 87 strikes on the ground. So a dominating round for the challenger as we head into the third. Blue, you ready? Red, you ready? Go. Front kick from Kunin. The ladies of MMA always provide surprises and fireworks, and of course, Strike Force, home of some of the best female fighters on the planet. And tonight we're seeing Liz Carmouche challenge Strike Force women's 135 pound champion, Marlos Kunin. And so far, after that second round, one would have to say that Carmouche 
is getting the better of the champion as she's looking for the trip takedown. How did you score the second round, Pat? You know, I think obviously easily a 10-9, possibly a 10-8. We need uh, more 10-8 rounds, my man. She Carmouche put it on her. I mean, make no make no mistake. What about you, Frank? I, I would call it a 10-8, man. I mean, Carmouche got she got she put the butt weapon on. Everything, the position, striking. I mean, she was she was winning the game. Carmouche doing a good job controlling the wrist there. Of the third round has elapsed. Referee Franklin warning them he'd like to see a little more action along the fence. Kona now with that elbow strike. And she needs to do better of that, create that separation. She's got the striking in her arsenal. Carmouche doing a great job of being like Velcro, sticking to the champion. And there's a knee, and again, that all-important distance. And here's a perfect opportunity, right, guys? Yeah, you're right, though, Pat. Carmouche is locking those arms up. Yeah, she's doing a good job. Position. She's just staying glued to, uh, you know, to Carmouche or Kunin the whole time, staying tight, not uh, not risking the long strikes, the kicks. And I, th I think the kicks actually were starting to hurt her legs. Carmouche joined the Marine Corps at the age of 20, spent five years as an electrician for helicopters, even attached to a grunt unit, which she describes as ground fighting outside of the perimeter where the rest of the units are stationed. So she has seen it all. Another American hero looking to become Strike Force women's 135 pound champion. What does Kunin need to do a better job here, guys? Because right now, as you mentioned, Carmouche doing a great job of just keeping her close, yeah. stifling her. Kunin needs to figure out how to get a take. I mean, uh, yeah, Kunin needs to get a takedown and go to work on the top, but she's having a fit. Well, the takedown is from Carmouche, and again, into side control. I think you're right, Pat. She's losing arm position. When she loses arm position, then she's losing hip position, and then she goes down. She needs to swim and get more on the stand-up. And Carmouche on top is obviously a bear. She's been putting it on. A veteran, Kunin, looking to block with the knee, but now she was going for the mount, but snatched that one leg. But here's full mount again for Carmouche. And we saw her ground and pound her mercilessly in the second round. She needs to spin around. Kunin needs to spin around and put her feet on that case, get her hips elevated. I think it's coming, Frank. I hope so. See, this is not a high mount. Now she's trying to explode the hips, but the strength of Carmouche doing a good job defending. Now posturing up, ground and pound. Kunin shelling up, wing blocking. But the judges, of course, are seeing what Liz Carmouche is doing to the champion from the mount. I wonder if Kunin trains in a cage, because she's not bridging off the cage. Right. And again, looking to hook the arms, misses out and just eating some more punches like she is blocking them. But again, it's the visual. I think, I think the big difference here is Kunin did not picture herself getting out muscled by a girl that's five foot four. And, and that's exactly what's happening. Carmouche has been just muscling her around. The gorilla with the ground and pound neutralizing the champion's right arm, feeding her a steady diet of strikes. Another left hand, watching the back of the head, though. Final 60 seconds of the third round, and now she's going for the Americana, it seems, momentarily. Carmouche with one submission, victory in her short career, and there, a strike from Kunin from the bottom, but she is just being overwhelmed here. You know, I'm, I'm surprised that Kunin's basically been using that as her escape. Uh, I thought she would know more how to get out of that mount position, but I think maybe, you know, she's a little panic-stricken by where she's at, too. Final 30 seconds. The smorgasbord of strikes from Carmouche Hammerfist. Lefts and rights, a steady symphony. Kunin just absorbing everything, unable to move. And again, just like the end of the second round, the end of the third comes with Carmouche in full mount, delivering all kinds of damage to the champion. What a performance by the challenger, Liz Carmouche! <laughs> wow. And the military vets in attendance enjoying the action here tonight as well. And of course, Carmouche, the former Marine, Kunin looks shell-shocked. 
This is my favorite strike of the round here. This is that beautiful short elbow. Look at that. Right to the side of the chin, right to the side of the neck from the clinch position. But she needed to wrestle out, get those arms get going. But the takedown is, is where the game was lost right here. And couldn't even try to grab the gauge to stop it. But arm positioning got her, the leg tripped her, and Carmouche took her right down. And this just does not look like you are winning a fight when someone is sitting on your chest punching you in the head. Uh, it does I've, not look good. Not to anybody in the building, I'm guessing. <laughs> does not look good. Carmouche very strong, though, very strong. She Landed 88 of 141 strikes in that third round compared to just 14 of 20 for Kunin. Carmouche one for two in the takedown department and uh, wow, she continues to dominate well, the ready? strike force women's 135 ready? pound champion. Another 10-9 round or, or what are you saying there, Mr. Pat? Yeah, no, I'm gonna go with the 10-9 overall. Yeah, I said 10-9, that was, that was fair. Look at the, the power on the body lock. Kunin ends up in an advantageous position, top position with Carmouche on her back. Half butterfly hooks, the heel strikes from Carmouche, always active. Good wrist control as well. Momentarily now looking work in that rubber guard. Pushes Kunin away. Up kicks. Kunin wants to pass that guard. Right hand, but gets pushed off again by Carmouche. And Carmouche now, wow, lunges forward to the double leg. Well done. That was a fast roll up into that double leg. Very good. She's got to be careful with that arm on the inside of, Car of Kunin's legs because Kunin could and lock that arm inside. Take down by Carmouche. Carmouche's, Carmouche's arm is trapped inside. That's not a good thing. Yeah, she's got to keep advancing. Kunin's got to keep advancing that guard in that position. This is a chance. Conan looking maybe for the triangle the champ. She jump. sends it in. Keep the it champion best. looking for the submission win. I got the head down. She's pulling the head down. In a fight she has been dominated in. Looking to force Carmouche to tap. It's over. Marlos Conan wow. in a dramatic fashion. In a comeback for the ages. Forces Liz Carmouche to tap out. Breathing a huge sigh of relief. An amazing submission win. And if you have ever seen or heard the term snatching the victory from the Johnson defeat, we just saw it there. Amazing, amazing comeback of Kunin, man. And that's the thing, with her on her back, you never know. She's very tricky, very long, a lot of leverage. What about Liz Carmouche? Less than two weeks notice, only six fights under her belt, suffers her first defeat, but in a title fight where I think her stock shot way up. Her oh, stock yeah. went through the roof, right, Frank? Oh, yeah, that's girl power, man. She went out and put it on the champ. That's girl power. Uh, that's respect right there. That's MMA. She bowed to her opponent, and she's telling her she respects her. Look at that. Like a champion, she pulled it out. I mean, to be mounted that many rounds, you know what I'm saying? That's tough. And good positioning. You know what? She got, as soon as that leg was up on your right pad, that arm trapped inside is what set up this hold. And, and she couldn't get the arm out. Once Poonin got that figure four lock and the head position, it was all over. Just a matter of time. And you saw Garbouche try to back out there in the last minute, like, oh, no, I got to go. Kuna did an incredible job of getting the angle. I mean, she really had to work for that angle to get that triangle locked up, but she knew that she could get there from the very beginning once Carmouche's arm was trapped inside. Do you think maybe that was her strategy? Tire out the, the stronger girl? I mean, it didn't work with Cyborg. Cyborg was much too strong. I finished it with punches, but I mean, that's a strong girl out there. One more look at this hold. It's just perfect technique, figure four legs, head down. Look how nice and tight this is. What you can't tell is her arm is actually choking her. Kuna's leg is choking her. The whole thing is a choking mess. That is relief. That is, I'm gonna celebrate after I get up. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 1 minute 29 seconds in round number four. A triangle choke ends this contest as the fighter taps out. She is the winner by way of submission. She is still the Strike Force Women's World Welterweight Champion, Marluz Kunin. 
Ladies and gentlemen, before we talk to Marlos Kuhn and congratulations, champion, what about a nice round of applause for the very game challenger? Let's bring her over here. Less than two weeks' notice, Liz Carmouche, well done. Thank you. What, obviously, it didn't end well, but uh, what, what were you thinking for the first three rounds? Were you surprised at how you were able to dominate the champion? Uh, no, I wasn't surprised. She was, she was wonderful. Uh, I just wish I finished the right way. I felt like I was winning. I was doing a good job, but I have room to improve. I'm going to do that. Well, it's one of those cases where even in a loss, your stock improved. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it one more time for Liz Carmouche. And right now, the lady of the hour breathing a huge sigh of relief. I'm sure, Marlouse, you did it. Obviously, you're known for your submission game. You pick up your first win via triangle choke, but what happened in those first three rounds? Because the challenger was, was giving it to you, wasn't she? Uh, at least was with my ass. <laughs> and I really want to make sure that everybody gets how much respect her. She will be a, a future, a, a future a champ someday. But I want to thank the American audience for welcoming a foreign fighter. Thank you all. You two at home, and I want to thank my sponsors, Showtime, for giving the women in MMA a chance. Thank you so much for that. We really work hard for it. And not to forget about Scott Coke, of course. Marlos, you've been around this sport a long time. North American fans are just getting to know you now, but you're doing a great job of stepping out of the shadows of the Chris Cyborgs and the Gina Caranos. There was a lady you were supposed to face tonight. I know you're wishing her well in a recovery. Misha Tate, who's at home nursing a knee injury. Obviously, that's the next fight for you. What do you think about Misha Tate as your next challenger? Uh, Scott is the boss. He decides, but I would love to fight her. Misha, if you see this, <laughs> I will get, come and get you. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a tremendous fight, a dramatic win. She is still the Strikeforce Women's 135-pound champion. Let's hear it for the Golden Girl. All right, let's go back to King's side. Pat, I just love what the girls bring, the, the flavor, the energy. I mean, they, they bring it spirit every single time. Literally, yes, every every fight. Well, let's talk about the copy strike numbers. What are the numbers throwing out at you here, Pat? I, I mean, Carmouche was really very active. She was mauling her. Got three of six takedowns, 50%, but a lot of attempts, obviously. Uh, dominant positions. I mean, when you look at football games and you see uh, time of possession and you figure out the other team ended up winning, big plays, man, and that's what it took. One big play, wow. one big move. It was only two submission attempts. The second one working the triangle choke. Marlos Kuna retains her title. Much, much relief. 15 years in the making to become a champion for mixed martial arts, leading the ladies' charge. And, um, man, I'm really impressed with Marlos Kuna. Took uh, 15 years to become an overnight success. I know, right? Isn't that fantastic? Well, let's throw it over cage side to Mr. Moro Ronaldo. All right, guys. Well, there are a lot of luminaries enjoying the action here tonight at the Nationwide Arena. In